25th Earth Day um, to Greta help see help us see some of the problems in our world that we can help. The little boy showed us problems that we and things we can do to help. I am farmer, which is growing an environmental movement in Cameroon by Baptiste and Miranda Paul will help us see another urgent need around the world. And in one person's eyes, help for us to see what that is. And here she is. Sarah Nula Farmer, his grandmother who taught him about gardening at a very young age. Here's Farmer. Tantoa stands beneath banana trees that grew from one he planted 30 years earlier in Taku, Cameroon. The original tree was a gift for his grandmother. And here, water is life. A sign with tips for keeping water clean stands in front of the can hard these prints little botanical gardens in his hometown in in Cameroon and here is a road that leads to and I'm it's unfortunate a lot of these places in this country I may not pronounce correctly so my apologies Akawitu, Cameroon, provides a view of the landscape during the dry season. I am farmer, growing an environmental movement in Cameroon. This is northwestern Cameroon, green, wet, alive. The rainy season has begun. A young boy arrives at his grandmother's farm. His feet squish between rows of cabbage and beans. His small hands plunge into the dirt. Now she! Oh, Tonto! His father laughs. His grandmother laughs too. They do not stop him. They understand his joy. Tantu rummages through grandmother's market basket. A sharp smell fills the air. Onions. He wonders if he can grow them by himself. He sneaks them under a banana tree. Each day, when he checks on his secret garden, the greens have shriveled a bit more. Eventually, the bulbs dry up. Why won't they grow? Ma ku, he asks his grandmother. Like I said, I might not pronounce everything right, so I'm just giving it a try. They need sunlight and earth, she says, and most importantly, water. She explains that nature has its own ways of working. Tantu wants to learn more. He wants to learn everything. When he begins, in school, Tantu drinks up facts and figures faster than his teacher can pour them onto the chalkboard. His hand shoots up like a cornstalk. And once he, he knew that thing that kind of became his passion, right? His big point of interest. It's exactly what Greta did. Greta heard that and got passionate about climate. And she dove into learning and dove into learning and dove into learning just like he is. Teachers frown. Too many questions. Students giggle. What's so interesting about plants and dirt and weather? Kind of those same kinds of things for Greta too, right? And I know I'm glad Greta didn't get swayed by that. She just kept pressing forward. She, she knew that was her interest and her passion where she wanted to make a difference. Let's see what happens here, what happens with him next. As a teenager, Tantu is still fascinated by nature. 
Tantu's father is sick, but he finds a way to buy his son a shovel and other gardening supplies. Tantu uses these tools every day and keeps record books of the seeds he's planted and how long each one takes to grow. He shows his biology teacher, Mr. Ken, his records. His classmates give him a nickname, Farmer. It is not a nice name. It is a name that is meant to make him feel as low as the dirt beneath his feet. So they try to make him feel bad instead of encourage him. But Tantu loves the dirt. He loves the texture of the roots. He loves the smell of dark, wet soil. He loves the corn it can grow and the fufu it provides for his brothers and sisters, especially now that his father is dying. One morning, he makes himself a new school uniform. He puts big letters on the front. Farmer. Tantu wears, <clears throat> excuse me, wears the shirt to school for the rest of high school. His elder brother shakes his head. Farmers, they're very poor. His brother urges him to do well on a special upcoming exam so he can provide for the family. If you get good marks, you can work in an office, be a police officer, or a teacher. On the day of his, his exams, Tantu considers his brother's advice. Their father now has died, and his brother is now the head of the family. Tantu fills in the correct answers, the ones that will get him a good paying office job. Before he hands in his exam, he wipes dust off his desk, dust that reminds him how dry the land can be. His own mother and neighbors walk far to get clean water and struggle to grow enough food. He imagines himself away from them and stuck inside an office. Huh. He did, he did. He busted out. Those are his answers. Why would he do that? And he failed. Hmm. And the author is wanting us to infer this and why he would cross this out. He crossed it out, and that's what gave him the F. He actually knew this stuff. He knew the information. Why would he do that? He crosses out his answers and hands in his paper. He signs it. He signs it. F. For farmer. And then his teacher signs it with an F. For fail. Are you thinking? Back here in this line, the author wanted us to infer this too. Before he hands it in, that dust reminded him of how his mother and his neighbors have to walk so far for clean water. And they're still struggling to just grow enough food. He wants to be a part of this. This is what the author is wanting you to infer. That being in an office... That's not where he wants to make a difference. That's not what's calling him. On the inside, his passion, what's calling him is something he can do with the land to help his mom, his brother, his neighbors. Maybe he can help find a solution where they'll have clean water and they don't have to walk so far. And we read a book this year that talked about a, a mom and daughter who had to walk all that way for that water every day, right? And how that made us feel the empathy that that pulled out for us. And so Farmer and his family are there too. And on top of that, growing food for survival is hard. His days at school are over. So the land in his village of Nakambi becomes his classroom. He spends his days and sometimes nights digging, planting, reading, and asking. Even Mr. Ken, who lives nearby, can't answer all 
of Farmer Tantu's questions. As he works, Farmer Tantu meets others who share his love for the land and water. One of the people he meets recognizes how important his love of farming is and provides money to send him to college. Tantu will be able to study the environment and the agriculture at a local school. But she's super excited about that. And I'd have to do my research with Greta. wonder where she's at and what grade in school. Because I know that she's still pretty young, so she's possibly still in high school. And I wonder if her plans are to go study the climate like Farmer. His plans are to study the environment and the agriculture, the land. Finally, his classmates and teachers will praise him for talking about the weather, learning about water, and playing with the soil. At college, Farmer Tantu is thirsty, which means he's eager to learn everything he can. Although he soaks up plenty of facts and figures, clean water is still scarce. Not a lot of it. He contracts typhoid from drinking the local water. He is so sick. He worries he may not live long enough to graduate. Oh no. So, because they don't have enough clean water, the water he does have made him sick. For seven years, medical doctors and local healers use their knowledge, medicines, and herbs to make Farmer Tantu feel better. Seven years. Wow. During his recovery, he thinks a lot about his future and the future of his fellow Cameroonians. No one should die from drinking something that is necessary for life, which is water. After he is better, Farmer Tantu gets a chance to continue his studies in the United States. There, he finds out about new ways to save the rain, find clean underground water, and grow gardens and crops without poisoning the soil and the wells. Back in Cameroon, Farmer Tantu is eager to use what he has learned. People are still getting sick because they don't have clean water. And when the dry season comes, there's hunger and drought. How can he help his people? Resources are limited. Most villages don't have tractors or motorized tillers or irrigation systems to bring water to fields. Some don't even have roads. Farmer Tantu creates a motto to help motivate himself and others. We got connections here to the little boy. His motto was not for me, please. Greta's, let's do something about our house is on fire. Let's do something about that. Here's his. When you don't have what you want, use what you have. When you don't have what you want, use what you have. While he doesn't have much, he does have people. Tantu gathers children and teenagers to join him in the fields. Some laugh at him or shake their heads, but others grab a shovel or a hoe. And together, they build botanical gardens and rain gardens that will hold water in the soil. These areas produce food or flowers all year long and provide green spaces to reconnect people with nature. The mayor of his home village, Pakambi, is impressed. Eventually, the mayor promises to make sure the garden stays beautiful for years to come. By now, everyone in northwest Cameroon is calling Tantu farmer, and they say it this time with pride. In the Funani village of of Aquitu, Tatu learns that people are drinking from the same stream as their cattle. The water contains harmful bacteria, and many children are getting sick and dying. 
Tantu helps the villagers locate a clean spring, but they don't have money for equipment and labors people to build a catchment that can hold catchment to hold the water. Abiyo wane, Tantu says. It is a limbum phrase for community, meaning unity is strength. Unity is strength. He translates into Funani so that everyone in the village understands. Young and old, everyone in Akitu pitches in to clear a path or carry stones. Together, they construct a catchment to capture the spring water. Before long, the entire village has crisp, clean water flowing year-round. Two years later, a grandfather will tell Farmer Tantu that since drinking the new water, not one of his neighbors or grandchildren has gotten sick or complained of a stomach ache. One project leads to another and another. Farmer Tantu finds Save Your Future Association, which is a nonprofit organization to which people around the world can donate money and supplies. With local and international support, he finds a way to bring clean water to Nijrong, a village suffering after a 30-year conflict. He begins a water delivery service for blind students. He hires engineers to design stairways stairways, railings, or ramps for villag villagers with physical disabilities. In places with large populations, communities build reservoirs so that in times of drought, people can get the water they need. Today, this is Northwest Cameroon. Sometimes wet, sometimes dry, but always very alive. Today, Farmer Tantu does not work alone. A stream of hands works to find fresh, clean water. A tickle of hope runs through many villages. And a crop of young farmers who are proud to be farmers are digging in, planting ideas, and growing a movement. And here. Here's the author's note. I probably won't read this whole thing, but I could browse it. In Cameroon, some people preface a tale by saying, story long, time short. That's certainly how we have felt while researching and writing this book. In the seven years since we had first met Farmer Tantu, we've become to discover how wide and deep the impacts of his philosophy in hard work are. So the writer traveled here into his place in 2017 and learned about him to write his story. And some of the words were translated so that that fufu was ground up corn. Mak, makfu is grandmother. Nashi, dirt or soil. Words for water. In Cameroon, people speak more than 250 languages and dialects. As farmer Tantu travels from one village to another, he must learn to communicate with the local people so he can pass on his knowledge and also learn from them. Here are just a few ways to say water in various parts of Cameroon. Look at all these different languages. And he said there are 250 different languages and dialects. And he had to learn a lot, didn't he? Not just about. And see, Cameroon is blown up here. But it shows you which part of Africa that is right here. And ends with real, real pictures. Proverbs. Proverbs are wise sayings are a part of most cultures and languages, especially in the country of Cameroon and on the African 
continent. Many proverbs, proverbs are old. Other proverbs are fairly new. In fact, two of the proverbs listed here are Farmer Tantu originals. These sayings motivate Tantu and his volunteers while they work together through challenging situations. If you don't have what you want, use what you have. And this is him using his truck to carry his supplies. Strong, or sorry, story long, time short. You always learn more when you lose than when you win. The wound is not so serious. From small things, big things grow. What an old man can see while sitting, a young man can't see even if he climbs the tallest trees. In here, they, can, they built things so they could carry water more safely. This is um, clean water flows year-round from the spring catchment in Cameroon. This is um, Tantu's wife and their children. This is his grandmother outside one of the houses that Tantu lived as a boy. It doesn't matter where you come from. You are never too small or insignificant to contribute to the long-term sustainability of our planet. By doing simple things to the best of your ability, you are improving our world. Farmer Tantu, happy Earth Day.